next two speakers are Robert Ferry and Elizabeth Minoyan, and they're the founding directors of the Landar Generator Initiative, LAGI. LAGI is working to address the issue of public acceptance of local renewable energy by providing models of energy generation architecture that rise to the level of contemporary public art. Every two years, LAGI holds an international design competition, and Robert and Elizabeth are here to tell you about that. Over to you. So Zachary told us that it's happening. Now let's get creative. So Pittsburgh is usually the kind of city where you randomly run into people, especially those in the same circle as you. So it's actually quite an accomplishment that for two stretches of time, we literally worked one floor apart from each other and never met. The first stretch was at Carnegie Mellon University where Elizabeth was on the third floor getting a master's and I was on the second floor studying architecture. After another three years of working a floor apart at a downtown Pittsburgh high rise, we finally met in an elevator and got to talking and later to dancing. I soon learned that she had started a nonprofit, was hosting artist residencies, had purchased a small plot of land and was interested in working with an architect on a net zero public new media center. Well, that was a recipe for love. And <laughs> we ended up getting married in 2008 and we also share a passion for adventure. And when an oppor opportunity came up to move to Dubai, we decided to embark on a four year honeymoon in the Middle East. It would turn out to be a life-changing experience and would inspire us to develop together what has become a growing social practice project. We learned that there is a rich tradition of land art in the United Arab Emirates. For many Emirati artists, such as Mohammed Ahmed Ibrahim, whose work you see here, the tension between a recent world full of closeness to the earth and a rapidly emerging world that imposes such authority over it inspires their creative energy. We had arrived only months before the global financial crisis to a city with great ambitions. Juxtaposed against the ever taller air conditioned glass towers, we found a rich tradition of passive energy efficient vernacular architecture, a land rich with solar resources, and a people with a deep awareness of the temporary nature of the fossil fuel driven growth. All of this got us thinking and designing looking for ways in which these exquisite contradictions could be leveraged in some ways towards an outcome that could be environmentally neutral or positive. What if the next 600 meter tall skyscrapers incorporated the latest in concentrated solar power and updraft technologies that could passively cool the interior while converting the sun's energy into power for an entire neighborhood? And what if our cities were populated by living buildings that functioned like canopy trees in a forest, converting the energy of the sun and the wind into electricity while passively regulating the environment? Building integration leads to district and citywide integration. And what role is there for artists and creatives in designing these new sustainable infrastructures to be joyful contributions to public spaces? How much land area would we really need by 2030 if we were to replace every BTU of energy with the power of the sun? These questions sent us into research mode, and we started diving deep into the calculations, sharing our findings as a way to stimulate conversation and illustrate what a near future might look like free from greenhouse gas emissions. So we started the Land, Out, uh, land Art Generator Initiative, or LOGI. In the tradition of land art, it merges the natural elements with concept and beauty. We call it solution-based art, or sustainable infrastructure art. And every two years, we hold an open international call, inviting teams to conceive of large-scale artworks that also serve as utility-scale power plants for cities. We launched our first design competition in January of 2010. We chose three sites that are gateways to Dubai and Abu Dhabi, open areas of disturbed land along highly trafficked highways. We didn't have the $20,000 in prize money that we had promised in the design brief, but we felt strongly enough that the idea was very strong to take the risk. And it really paid off. This is one of the first submissions to come before the May deadline. All of the surfaces are solar panels, and these tinted crystalline silicon products are on the market, so it's quite feasible. We were a little worried on the night of the deadline because this was the only entry we'd received. <laughs> but we thought, at least we have one good submission. But the next morning, it was like Christmas. We had 150 submissions from 40 countries, amazing ideas of what renewable energy can aspire to be, places for people to explore, destinations for tourists, drivers of economic development, like Light Sanctuary here, powering 500 homes with thin film technology. As soon as we had these positive visions of our future energy landscapes, we followed up with Mazda, who fell in love with Loggy, sponsored the prize, flew the winning team in, and set up an exhibition of the shortlist center stage at the World Future Energy Summit. Sultan al Jaber wrote an opening to our first book, and yes, that is Ban Ki-moon in the photo there. We were hooked, and we had to do it again. Where would be the next city that could inspire people to participate? 
we reached out to Eloise Hirsch, New York City Fresh Kills Park Administrator. On the site of what was once the world's largest landfill, we found 100 acres of land with clear access to the sun and the wind. 250 ideas came in from all corners of the globe, representing interdisciplinary teams of artists, architects, engineers, and landscape architects. Like Solar Loop, it uses standard PV panels set on a form created by the solar diagram of the site. But the low, below the landscape is reflected, reminiscent of Anish Kapoor's Cloud Gate in Chicago. Matthew Rosenberg used wind as his medium and generated these spectacular landforms from the wind rose diagram at the site. They funnel and accelerate the speed of the wind to the turbines inside, creating a calm central green at the top of the hill. At this point, people were really getting this idea and Loggy was getting some great press attention. But it was really this past year in 2014 when we brought Loggy to Copenhagen that the project got some heavy hitting buy-in from policymakers and politicians. Loggy 2014 coincided with the city deservedly holding the title Green Capital of Europe, and the Danish Design Center hosted the Loggy 2014 exhibition and award ceremony. The design site across from the iconic Little Mermaid it provided the perfect inspiration for teams, and led to some interesting ideas like Energy Duck. <laughs> One of the great things about Loggy is that those who participate are part of a large portfolio of ideas that we actively look to connect to interested cities and developers. For example, we're currently in um, the design process of building Wind Nest in Pittsburgh, funded by uh, a couple of Pittsburgh foundations. Another project that we would love to see built is Solar Hourglass, the winner of Loggy 2014, it uses beam down solar power technology similar to a prototype developed by Mazdar. The lead Mazdar engineer reached out to us after reading about the project in CSP Today and says that the project is feasible and wants to be on the team. This year, um, we will be holding Loggy 2016 in Southern California, and we'll address the water energy nexus. Of course, we hope that the land art generators can be a small and inspiring part of that solution, a way to engage people with new technology and show a positive vision of our clean energy future. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>